If you spend much time around the Cloud Foundry community, you hear all about the wonders of CF Push. There is good reason for this. What it allows you to do is, in a single command, abstract away the building and running of applications. In the single command, it uploads your code, builds, containerizes, and runs it. It also sets up any routing and connects any services that it needs. This simple graphic shows the steps needed to build a container and deploy it in a typical Kubernetes environment. While you can obviously automate much of this yourself, it's error prone and costly to maintain. To give you an idea of how CF Push simplifies this process, I'm going to run through three examples of how to use it uh, to deploy a very simple node application. The first is just a simple CF Push from the command line. To use any of these, all you need is an app manifest. Here are the contents of mine. Basically, it just says, here's the application, and its name is Hello World Node. So it can be as simple as just these two lines stating the name, or it can be as complicated as needed. My app is a pretty basic Node.js application, so this manifest can be simple again. Uh, just to show you uh, what is in this application, uh, the, the only dependency that I have is Express. Um, there, there aren't any extra dependencies that you need uh, for Cloud Foundry from Node. So let's run CF Push and see what happens. So first thing that it does is that it sees that it pulls the name and sets up a route with that application um, based on the application's name. Then it goes ahead and uploads the files uh, to, to Cloud Foundry. And then it starts working on, uh, it pushes over to the build pack. Um, if you caught that, it was, I'll scroll up real fast. Uh, it, it automatically knew that we were using the Node.js build pack. That's based on the Node, the package.json. So build packs give you a, a very easy way uh, to, um, to simplify your deployment or your, your building of your packages. So once it goes ahead and deploys, or sorry, once it goes ahead and builds it, it will go ahead and, and start the deployment. And now it's just waiting for, for that deployment to start. Uh, as you see here, uh, it, when it started, it's in the running state and it gave us a route to use. So I've already got this loaded up on this. So I re reload, I can see that's running. So let's, let's say we want to change it. It would be really easy. Let's uh, source app. Uh, and we add that in. So all we need to do is push again. Again, uploads the files, it goes through all the same steps. Uh, as soon as it um, gives us the complete, I'll re reload the page and we'll see what changed. Um, Uh, this is, because everything is running in the cloud, uh, this is much easier than having to um, figure out like weird SSH piping to be able to run, especially if you're building a, uh, the the part that you're building is kind of a, a middle section in, in a larger ecosystem. A lot of times those can be very hard uh, to break apart and actually be able to have running on your own development uh, laptop. Uh, so you, this gives you a way that you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about uh, the parts that you can't really mock up or run in a local development environment. So that finished, so let's go ahead and reload. You can see that that change took. So the next is through Stratos. Uh, so Stratos is a UI that is built for uh, Cloud Foundry and uh, Kubernetes. Um, as you see, actually, I'll, I'll back up. As you see, it sees that our new app is there. Um, for the sake of this demo, I'm going to go ahead and delete it, um, just so that we've got a clean, a clean way to deploy from. Okay, so that's deleted. Uh, so to create a new application, uh, we would go up here. Uh, my application is hosted in GitLab right now. We pick a organization and space that we want this to deploy into. 
And with GitLab and GitHub, one of the really interesting things is the, um, the integrations that we have. So I can just type in my namespace and it'll actually pull up which projects I have available. Uh, these were not loaded in ahead of time. So I can also come in and select uh, the git commit. So I, I made a git mistake earlier, so here's me fixing that git mistake. Uh, here are all the options. These can be set up in the manifest file or they can be uh, created, they can be edited here. So I can come in and give it a, a different uh, application name if I wanted to. I'm gonna leave them as the defaults for right now. And you can see that's doing basically the same thing. Um, it does, it uses all the same processes, it uses the same build pack. Uh, really the benefit to using uh, Stratos is that you get a little bit more of a pull system uh, so it gives you some control from the, your administration um, to be able to pull uh, new versions of, of applications as you want, uh, rather than having your developers uh, push uh, new packages all the time. Uh, this really, the benefits um, really depend on, on how you, you work as a team internally and also the application that you're, you're developing. Can see that this is coming up and yep now we're running so I can go to the application summary you can see that deployed and it's online we've got one of one running um, you can do this even after you but I'm going to go ahead and spin up two instances you can see that it starts here uh, Stratus is a fantastic tool for managing your Cloud Foundry applications so the third way that I want to show how to install uh, is really just a riff on the CF push. And it's just to build the CF push uh, into your own uh, CI CD pipelines. I believe that this gives the best of both worlds, as well as opens up some interesting options uh, for workflows. So let's look at a sample pipeline that I built just to uh, show what could be done. So I'm, gonna, I'm just showing what I did in GitLab. It doesn't have to be GitLab, it could be Jenkins, it could be uh, CircleCI, it could be what, your own homegrown solution. Um, and, but here's, here's what I built. Um, basically, I just have this push step, which just runs in a container that has the CFCLI installed into it, and just uh, sets up the API, and then just runs CF push. Uh, it's just that easy. Uh, so the whole idea is that instead of having to manage, um, so I'm going to go in here and show it just the output of that. Yeah, so instead of having to manage the huge amount of YAML files uh, for the services, for the route, for the ingress, for um, for the deployments that you need, as well as any external services and making sure that those are routable, um, you don't have to manage that yourself. You don't have to worry about if something changes, if your application changes, if you want, if say you've got 200 or 300 of these uh, applications, little, if you're really going the microservice route and you've got uh, teams all over the place uh, uh, developing their own applications, you don't have to worry about um, if you have, uh, if you want to make a change to the uh, the pipeline or how things are done kind of at a higher level, you don't have to have every single team make that change. You can make it in a more central place. Uh, and it really just gives you a huge amount of flexibility. And just in general, uh, the beauty of, of SUSE Cloud Application Platform and the way we've built Cloud Foundry on top of Kubernetes uh, is just really geared around giving you that flexibility and the, the ease of use. So hopefully that was uh, these ideas are interesting and thank you for for watching.